Google is known for being extremely hard to get into as a software engineer. You have to jump through a bunch of technical coding rounds, a behavioral interview, some system design if you're more senior, and even when you pass all of those interviews, you still have to go through team matching. So needless to say, it's just a lot. I interviewed for the first time at Google early this year, and I was fortunate enough to get in on my first try. So was it luck, skill? Was it a combination of both? Let's dive into how I was able to pass these Google interviews. I think the key to cracking the Google interview is understanding what makes the Google interviews so difficult. Like most FANG technical interviews, it takes a fair amount of study preparation to do well. But at least from my experience, Google has some uniqueness in its technical interview process in comparison to other large tech companies. The first unique quality about Google interviews is that the questions seem to have very long and detailed problem descriptions. It almost feels like you have to read an essay before starting the problem, and then you have to reread it two more times to fully understand what it's actually asking you to do. When I was interviewing at Google, I noticed that the problem descriptions would sometimes be paragraphs long. And this is vastly different from my interview experience at other large tech companies. At other companies, the problems were very direct and easy to understand the first time you read the description. For example, at other large tech companies, they may ask, given an array of integers and an integer k, return the top k elements in the array. Very short description, easy to understand at least what you have to do. The solution may not be simple, but it didn't take long for you to read it and comprehend what the problem is asking you to do. In comparison, from my experience, Google would ask this question like this. You are trying to assemble the best basketball team in the league. You have a group of people all with varying heights, standing in a line, waiting to be chosen on the team. Additionally, each person has an overall skill rating. Given a list of unique person IDs representing each player, a list of heights in inches for each player, and a list of skill ratings for each player, optimally select the best five players on the team. Now, I totally just made this description up. This is obviously not a real problem, but you know, you get the point. Both the short and long descriptions lead to solving the same type of problem, but Google will be very indirect about how they actually ask it, which makes it just that much more difficult. The second unique quality about Google interviews, at least from what I've noticed, is that you are typically asked a single question per interview, but the problem likely has between one to three follow-up questions. So what this means is you might be asked to solve an initially simple problem. And then once you code up the solution, the interviewer will ask you to make changes to your code to solve a harder problem on top of it. And there really is no bounds to how many follow-up questions could be asked. In one of my interviews, I had three follow-up questions. So I had to code up four solutions relating to the same problem in a little less than an hour. Each follow-up is essentially an extension to the problem. This can be really difficult to do because refactoring code is not always trivial. In comparison with other tech company interviews, Usually interviewers will just ask two problems which have no correlation to one another. Once you solve one of them efficiently, you immediately move on to the next problem and can completely forget about the previous problem. This was exactly my experience when I passed the meta phone interview. It was one medium and one hard question, very simple descriptions, and they really only cared about speed and efficiency. You may feel differently, but at least for me, refactoring code is more difficult than solving a new problem. The third unique quality about Google interviews and why they're so hard to crack is that they ban questions that have been posted on popular coding websites, such as LeetCode and HackerRank. As soon as a Google interview problem is posted on any coding site and Google catches wind, that question theoretically should never be asked again by any interviewer. Of course, this can't be a perfect system because it's up to the interviewer to ask what they want, but it just shows how strict these interviews really are. Other companies don't really have this strategy, at least from my understanding. When I did my phone interview at Meta, 
Both of the questions I was asked came directly from leak code. In most interviews, this will not be the case for Google. So given these unique Google interview qualities, how did I overcome it? The first thing I did in my studying was I made problems harder for myself. I knew from reading posts on Leak Code and Blind that Google interviews did not typically ask multiple questions, but rather follow-up questions. So I tried my best to prepare in the same way. When I practiced on Leak Code, I wouldn't just solve a problem and move on. My strategy was to mimic a Google interview as much as I could. So after I solved a problem, I would try to make the problem harder by giving myself a follow-up question. For example, let's say I am trying to solve the problem K closest points to origin. Initially, I may solve this using a priority queue, and then I optimize it further to use a quick select algorithm to make it the most efficient possible. As a follow-up to the question that I would give to myself is instead of being given an array of points, now the points are given by a stream of data. So maybe I get a new point every 10 seconds and I need to recompute the K closest points. Then another follow-up is instead of finding the closest points to the origin, I need to find the K furthest points to the origin. This is just an example of my thought process. If I were to study this exact problem, I would come up with these follow-up questions to solve on my own. Also, there are some problems on Leak Code that have built-in follow-ups in the description, but they're not always enforced to solve the problem. So if you're preparing for a Google interview, always do the follow-up questions in the description or come up with your own follow-up questions like I did. The second thing I did to prepare for my Google interviews was by looking at problems posted in the Leak Code discussion forums. So if you search Google and search by newest, you will see tons of interview experiences. When you start practicing problems directly posted in the Leak Code discussion forum, you're getting very, very recent questions asked at Google, which is really beneficial. You can you know, gauge where you're at in your study preparation by seeing if you can solve these recently asked problems. For example, in this post, someone details all problems they were asked in the coding rounds. You can literally do a mock interview for each problem posted, which is probably the best way to prepare because they're recently asked and they're direct Google questions. Something to also mention is that it's very important to carefully select problems to practice. And this isn't just for the Google interview, this is any interview. You only have so many hours in the day, only so much time to study. So you wanna make sure your time is put to good use. There is a section on Leak Code where you can view the top Google questions, but I chose to completely ignore this list. And the reason why is because Google bans questions listed on Leak Code. Yeah, you might get lucky and one of the problems on that list might be at the tail end of its life in the Google interview cycle, but personally, I would rather not take a chance and study problems just for memorization. I wanna study problems for you know, true understanding. If you see a problem on the discussion forum, for example, and it's a problem you know how to solve right away just by looking at it, don't even bother solving it. Save your mental energy for the problems you know that you will struggle with because that's when you're gonna learn the most. The next thing I did that helped me pass my Google interviews was I set up other company interviews before Google. I made sure to only apply to other companies that I knew I would like to work for, but Google was still you know, my goal, my end goal. Since Google was my top choice, I wanted to make sure that I got some interview experience before jumping right into the notoriously hard Google interviews. The way I like to think about this strategy is like this. Say you are going for a run, you probably aren't going to start sprinting max speed in the very beginning. You know, you're gonna work yourself up, start with a light jog and pick up the pace as you go. Google interviews, in my opinion, are the sprint so I wanted to save that for the end of my interviewing journey. So my advice is if you are planning to interview at Google and you, you know, maybe you don't have much interview experience recently, set up some interviews with other companies beforehand for practice, or if you're, you know, genuinely interested in working for that company. And doing this strategy 
has an added bonus that you can have multiple competing offers and drive up the amount that you're worth. The final thing that helped me pass my Google interviews on my first try was by putting some attention to the behavioral portion. The coding rounds are definitely where you should spend a very large majority of your time, but that doesn't mean you should completely neglect the behavioral interview or Googliness round as Google refers to it. When I was setting up my onsite, the recruiter specifically mentioned to me that the behavioral round is vital to getting accepted into Google. Think about it this way. There are several rounds. You may not do 100% on each round and you may still pass the interviews, but there is only a single Googliness round. So it's extremely important to do well in it because there's no other chance to make it up in the process. At least this was the way it was explained to me and I feel like it was great advice. As a result, I spent some time going over my resume, coming up with talking points about previous roles I had, previous teammates I worked with, and some challenges that I had run into. This preparation doesn't need to take a long time. It should really just be, you know, being able to communicate your experiences. And if you're a new grad, you know, maybe you haven't worked your, you know, first job yet, you can talk about school projects that you've done and, you know, people that you've worked with in class. Google is very tough to crack, but with consistent study habits and careful problem selection, I have no doubt any of you can get in as well. If you're looking for study partners, feel free to join the public Discord channel. The link for that will be in the description. Let me know if you want me to go over my actual Google interview experience, like what each interview was like. I can do a video on that if it's highly requested. And with that, I will see you all next time.